Hello, I'm David Attenborough, and welcome to the incredible world of Pokemon. Join me today as we journey through Kanto to explore the wild Pokemon that inhabit this area. We will journey across great grasslands, dense forests, vast oceans, and dark caves in some of the most remote areas in search of the rarest of Pokemon. Our journey begins just outside of Pallet Town on Route 1. Here, one can encounter vast numbers of the common mouse Pokemon, Rattata. A swift and agile Pokemon with razor-sharp fangs, Rattata ceaselessly gathers edibles all day and spends its evenings continuously producing offspring. Also found in this area is the docile bird Pokemon, Pidgey. A common sighting in forests, it primarily spends its time hiding in the tall grass in search of food such as small bugs. It has an extremely sharp sense of direction and is capable of unerringly returning home to its nest, despite however far it may be removed from its familiar surroundings. Traveling eastward to the patch of grass on Route 22, one encounters several new Pokemon. The most common in this area are Nidoran, male and female. The female is the more docile and mild-mannered of the pair, and does not like to fight. However, its poisonous barbs can render this Pokemon very dangerous. Even a small scratch can be highly toxic. The slightly larger male has developed specialized muscles for keeping its large ears upright, and it can move them independently in any direction. Even the slightest of sounds does not escape this Pokemon's notice. Less commonly, one may encounter the pig monkey Pokemon, Mankey. It is light and agile on its feet, however, is particularly temperamental. One moment it may be quite docile, and the next moment can be seen thrashing about. The final Pokemon seen in this area is the tiny bird Pokemon, Spiro. This Pokemon primarily spends its time in the grass foraging for small bugs. Due to its small size, it has to constantly flap its wings to stay airborne. Unlike its more docile cousin, the Pidgey, the Spearow is incredibly territorial, and its shearing cry can be heard echoing through the forest from over half a mile away. Heading northward into the Viridian Forest, one can encounter vast swarms of bug Pokémon, primarily Caterpie and Weedle. Caterpie is a small larval stage worm with small feet that contain suction cups which enable it to tirelessly climb up the slopes and trees. If the antenna on top of its head are touched, it will release a horrible stench to ward off enemies. Caterpie's evolved form Metapod is also found abundantly in the Viridian Forest. This Pokemon has developed a shell of armor as tough as an iron slab, which enables it to protect itself as it prepares for its final form, Butterfree. This butterfly Pokemon is rarely seen in the wild, and must typically be obtained by catching and evolving one of its prior forms. Butterfree spends its days collecting honey using its keen eye that enables it to spot blooming flowers. Its wings also contain poisonous powder that also repels water, enabling Butterfree to fly even in the rain. The other predominant species seen in the Viridian Forest is the hairy bug Pokemon, Weedle. It is often found foraging in the forest and can distinguish between its favorite types of leaves using its highly sensitive nose. It also houses a poisonous barb atop its head for protection. Its evolved form, Kakuna, much like the Metapod, is essentially a motionless Pokemon with a hard exterior shell that hardens as it grows and prepares for metamorphosis. Its final form, Beedrill, is not commonly found in the wild. Unlike the docile Weedle, Beedrill is incredibly territorial, and unsuspecting visitors to a Beedrill nest may find themselves under attack by a large and furious swarm. It is capable of flying at very fast speeds and can attack using its large, venomous stingers found on its four legs and tail. The rarest Pokemon that can be found in the Viridian Forest is the electric mouse Pokemon, Pikachu. 
This intelligent Pokemon has electricity storing pouches on its cheeks, which appear to charge during the night. During the day, it forages for food, and will roast harder berries using its electricity to soften them for consumption. Traveling northward, we come to Pewter City, home to the Pewter Museum of Science and the Pewter City Gym. This concludes the first segment of our journey through Kanto. Join us next week as we venture eastward to the large and mostly unexplored region of Mount Moon. Thank you for tuning in to today's video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified for all my future videos.